Fighters gloves. touch gloves. And a southpaw stance by Curriton. Orthodox is Linder. And right away, he's establishing his distance with the side kicks. And he got caught with the right hand there. Linder's putting on the pressure. Pinning Curtin up against the cage, throwing heavy body shots here. You see the composure of Linder early. A big right hand there. Curtin's backing up. Big knee from Linder here. And an attempted boot sweep there. You can see the size difference between them two. Not only the size, but the pressure of Linder early on. We'll see if he can maintain this for the duration of the fight. The fact that Linder's had two fights already in the NFC cage, it really, it, you, it's clearly helping him tonight. He's, he's not showing any, any fear. He's going straight forward. Yeah, this could be a downfall, though, Daniel. No, absolutely. That's why the cardio comes that, into play here. That side kick, this up. Oh. that side kick really hurt him here. That side kick really hurt him, Daniel. Oh, oh big, big knee! knee. And another knee. And you see the maturity here of Curriton. Linder's hurt here. Linder's hurt, but he switches the position here, Daniel. And you see the experience of Linder here. He stayed relaxed. Interesting separation here. Well, what's uh, Nate Man saying to him? What He's exactly? going to have to take a point if he hits him in the nuts again. Oh, it was a low shot. I didn't see a low blow, though, Daniel. Yeah, I didn't see one either. It would be interesting to see a replay. And the action continues. You know, Kiraton didn't make any face either, you know. I, I don't think there was a low blow involved. Oh, look but at now, the pressure. Linder's coming forward and he's throwing big oh. shots here. You, oh. And now he has a low blow. <laughs> and he returns the favor. Linder needs to take his time here. Linder has up to five minutes he to recover. To, he needs to take his time. If he needs all five minutes to recover, he should use all five minutes. And Linder's in serious pain in front of us. But look at the heart of Linder. He's already back up on his feet. Linder needs to take his time here. Take advantage of five minutes. He has five minutes to recover. You know, up until this point, Jamar, his work in the clinch, those knees, you know, it kind of reminds me of uh, the legend Matt Brown. Every time he's in the clinch, he throws those devastating knees to the body. Devastating elbows. Here it's obviously amateur Muay Thai, so you can't throw elbows yet, but you can totally tell as he progresses his career. That's going to be a big part of his style. Absolutely. You can tell he's a very very much for, a forward fighter is what he is. He goes straight forward. He's not afraid to brawl. He's not afraid to bang. He's here for a fight. Yeah, and Curriton, he wants his distance. He wants Linder to slow down. He wants to get off on that sidekick. And I think he's kind of surprised by the pace and the pressure of Linder early on. So now it comes down to, can Linder keep this up? Angles are crucial for both men in this fight. If Linder starts cutting angles, he'll be able to tag Curriton a lot more. If Curriton starts cutting angles, he'll be able to get away from the strikes and land his sidekicks. But now we have Linder posted up against the... Big knee to the midsection, and he whips on a spin. And he's trying to land some teeps to the body, trying to slow down his opponent. Big knee from Linder again, and oh, another knee. Huge knee to the, to the solar plexus. Kiriton has Linder. very good head movement here, but he needs to stay away from, from the pressure of Linder. Both guys ate body shots there. <laughs> and a great first round. I mean, the big shots in the clinch, the big loopy punches that he landed, I mean, look, they're the loopy, but he landed. He didn't get countered. And right now, you can see Kurton. He likes this distance, this karate distance. And now he's letting his hands go a little bit. But Linder's coming straight forward. He oh. does not have any regret. <laughs> and that head kick was very close. And that's why Linder, I, I recommend keeping your hands up. Every time Linder puts on the pressure, he, he starts tagging Kurton. If he keeps the pressure on, he... Oh! <laughs> Big spinning hook kick. And Kiraton trying to get him back on it. Linder coming straight forward with hooks. Kiraton's trying to be elusive, but... Big shots from Linder here. Pushing him up against the cage here. The pressure is a lot here. Linder needs to keep the pressure on him. Linder's a dog here. Linder's going after it in this fight. He has no... 
no remorse for for Kiraton in this fight. He's going straight forward. Now, I'm surprised He's to see Kiraton not try to engage in the clinch. You know, the distance game isn't working. See if the close game will work. This is by far the best Linder we've seen in the NFC cage. A hundred percent, Jamar. And like we said earlier, that experience, it goes a long way. And now you're seeing him more comfortable than ever. And according to us, he's winning the fight. But Kiraton really finding his range here, getting comfortable, throwing his punches, really landing. And he eats two leg kicks in the process. Now let's not forget, this is a Muay Thai fight. This is an amateur Muay Thai fight. This is only two minute rounds. This has been a very action packed round. This has felt like a five minute round already, Daniel. I truly believe those knees in the clinch are what's slowing Kuraton down. You know, he's had success from, the di from range and also the big punches of Linder. Linder's consistently in his face and uh, he might have walked away with a second straight round in a row here. Not only the punt, not only the, the knees, of Linder, but the pressure against the cage, that's a lot of body weight against you. You can see the size difference, like I said. Two rounds down, what kind of adjustments would you tell him to make here? Well, every time he throws his hands, he starts landing them, so I would start pressuring Linder instead, using those angles, cutting angles, if he circles to his lead leg and starts throwing those punches a lot more. Guaranteed he'd start landing. And that's nice right there. By big, big body kick from Linder, though, at the same time. But look Linder, at, look like, at the footwork of Kuraton. Looking like a little Wonder Boy out there. Yeah, he's, he's starting to feel more comfortable. Oh, oh, right Linder's in. hurt! And I'm surprised Kuraton didn't follow up. That's that experience, you know? He needs a little more seasoning, and this could be a very dangerous guy in a couple fights down the line. I agree. Just a little bit of. Just an experience right now. It's clear in the third round he's starting to gain his momentum. Now they're brawling, though. But if you pay attention closely, Kieran's picking his shot, staying at range, at his own range, making sure Linder can't hit him. He's tagging Linder, getting away quickly. Oh, big, big inside leg leg kick. kick. And another one. Oh, Kieran felt that. Oh, Kieran right felt on the peroneal it. nerve. And another one right in the, in the inside of Curran's leg. And again, he's chopping down the tree. And he lands a big right as well. He's pinning him up against the fence. And this is such oh, a great fight. Big left hand from Curran. <laughs> Switch body kick from Curtin here. I'll tell you what. Curtin's starting to get comfortable here. Curtin might not walk away with the decision, but he can walk away and with... And a big uppercut hook cross from Curtin. He can walk away with his head held high because he was down two rounds, and he came to fight in the third round. He gave it everything he had. It's simply a matter of experience. And another so jab cross. This is a great fight, Daniel. Way to start off NFC 101. Excuse me, Nat, fight 101. Truly is. And uh, Cody Linder, he should have earned this, but you know what? I cannot wait to see both men back. What a fight this was. We go to the judges' scorecards. We have a split decision. Judge one scores a contest 29 28 Linder. Judge two scores a 29 28 Curitan. Judge three scores a 29 28 Your winner by split. A split decision. Go. Both fighters touch gloves. And you see Jesus, he has a wide stance here. This is interesting. I've never seen him with a karate approach before. And a big left head kick from Jesse. And he eats a jab. Uh, excuse me. And, and how long until uh, Jesse big. looks to shoot? And there it is. There's the first takedown attempt. And Let's right see. away, an underhook by Let's see if Jesus, Jesus can fight this off. He's fighting it off very well so far. Much improved takedown defense on the initial attempt like by I Jesus said, Diaz. Jesus has been strictly working on his takedown defense, making sure he's prepared for this one fight. And a big cross from Jesus here. And you see how he slipped his head off the center and, line. And, and right Je Jesse's backing up here. And a big head kick from Jesus. Beautiful and he fights underhook. the takedown again. Beautiful underhook by Jesus Diaz. And a oh. big right hand. They're trading shots. Jesse's, Jesse's hurt. hurt here. Jesse's hurt. And front kick to the face by Jesus. Jesus is looking the best he's ever looked early. 
and he used to fight the underhooks, and he lands a big knee, and Jesse's hurt. Jesse's hurt bad here. Jesse's feeling that three-day short notice. He's a very tough guy, but now reality's setting in. Look at that underhook by Jesus Diaz. This is something that he's clearly been working on. He's Jesus improving it, his bad. game. And, and now, a big right hand. Now he's uh, giving him a tour of the NFC cage. We're looking at a potential TKO here. He's really teeing off with the combinations. High, high, low is Jesus going. Oh, and a big a haymaker. Right. And, and eats a, a big jab. jab. Wow, he's shooting takedowns without setting them up. He's definitely fatigued here. We'll see. And a big, another right hand from Jesus here. And Jesus is keeping his composure. He's showing that veteran experience. And a beautiful uppercut there. And like I said, Jesus' boxing has always been superb. His striking's always been really good. And he's proving it tonight in the NFC cage at night fight, Nat Fight 101. Absolutely. And Jesse, uh, you know what? He's biting down. He's throwing some big, uh, some big punches as well. And there he lands a, a kick to the liver. Jesse is earning a lot of respect respect for everybody in this room tonight because he is showing a lot of heart here. He's taking some big shots, but he keeps coming forward, keeps shooting forward, and he might just have something here now, pinning Jesus up against the cage. Look at the double unders. Look how he turns the corner. And, and look a at big knee from Jesus. Beautiful head movement by Jesus Diaz there as he avoids the, the haymaker, the looping right hand of Jesse Miley. And another right hand. And Jesse Miley's biting down. This might be his debut. He might be gassed. But one thing we can both agree on is this kid's a fighter. This kid's definitely showing heart here tonight. Coming straight forward even after taking big shots. Jesse Miley. See, uh, now we're going to see who's got more left in the tank. Who wants this more? Jesus coming straight forward right out of the gate. And again, a wide base by Jesus, which is something we're not used to, him, to seeing from him, but the reason why he's doing it is because it makes it easier to stuff the takedowns. In earlier times, he stood up too, too tall in fights, and it would affect him. He'd get taken down, but now the fact that he's keeping that lower center of gravity, that's why he's able to keep this fight upright. And he takes control of the ring, control of the cage. And a left hook by Jesse Mealy. You know, Jesus' style reminds me a lot of the Diaz brothers. He comes comes to fight. He, I feel like he wants to slap his opponent every time he opens <laughs> his hands up like that. He definitely has the spirit of the Diaz brothers. Now let's see if he can put uh, hand combinations like they do. And he's doing it right before your eyes, Daniel. And a big body kick just misses. Jesse Maelli still staying in this fight here, throwing a hard leg kick. And it was checked. Oh! Jesus got rocked with the right. right hand. A big right hand from Jesse. And Jesus pops the jab. He circles outside. See, the issue here is that Mealy, he's waiting for his opportunity to explode because n knowing that he took this fight on three-day short notice, we don't know where his gas tank's at. So he's just waiting for that one knockout punch to land. But the long-term battle is being won by Jesus Diaz. And he's hurting him with these leg kicks. Will he finally get a takedown? Beautiful sprawl. You see the improvement of Jesus Diaz? That's Very the work he's been wrestling. putting in. And now he's looking to get the hooks. The babyface assassin, Damian Whitehead, has told me that he's been working on his jiu-jitsu and his wrestling takedown defense with oh, Jesus Beautiful Diaz. reversal by Jesse Mealy. But, but already you see Jesus Diaz, from where we're sitting, is he? it looks like he's attacking a triangle. I, I, feel, an arm, I feel an arm bar here. Yeah, he is attacking the arm. Don't forget, amateur MMA, no strikes to the head on the on the ground. And right now what Jesus needs to do is he needs to back up into the fence, try to wall walk, because this is the area of the game that he's had problems with in the past. But already he's trying to buck his opponent. He's trying to do a hip bump, a hip bump sweep. And let's see if he can get back up to his feet. He's pushing down on the head. Beautiful stuff by Jesus Diaz really, to attempt to get back to his really feet. Really stuffing the head of Jesse Maelli. And look at him. He's right back up to his feet now. In the second round, back down. A very high guard by Jesus Diaz, and he's going for a triangle choke. This might be it. And this Jesus might be Diaz is very well known for his triangle choke. This could be it. This could be it here. Ten, Ten seconds, seconds, left. seconds left on the clock. Switching it to an arm bar, but he looks like he's a little bit low on the arm. 
I can't tell from where we're sitting here. Great stuff by both these Warriors. And now it's going to come down to who wants it more. Here we go, last round. Fight number two on at Nat Fight 101. Jesse Maelli versus Jesus Diaz. Off to a great start. Great fight. Potential fight of the night. Would you agree, Daniel? Absolutely, but then again, there's only been two fights tonight, and this is any indicator. We're in for a, a great night of fights. And a big right hand from Jesse. And Jesse's biting down. I mean, this is a tough guy. Jesse's Jesse signed up to fight, and that's what he's here doing tonight. Oh, big, and a big combination. Jesus is really teeing off here. Taking center control and of the cage another again. right hand from Jesus as a counter. Jesse's still coming forward with that jab cross, though. He's showing massive heart and massive determination to finish this fight, Daniel. Absolutely. The opportunity presented itself, and he took it with full grasp, and here he is making his debut. Oh, and he gets caught with a big shot and, and a head hurt. kick. He's Me. hurt. He's hurt. Jesus Diaz looking for the finish. And Jesus Diaz is feeling uh, that tough second round. Both well. men trade jabs here. <laughs> Jesus, uh, oh, beautiful sprawl by Jesus Diaz. Right back up to his feet. And a, and a big knee from Jesus. And a takedown by Jesse Mealy. It is exactly what he needed here in the third round. He's looking to take the back. Let's see if he can get the hooks in. And Jesus is fighting the hands. He might have full mount here, Daniel. He's pushing him off. In the half, half guard, guard here. Beautiful adjustment by Jesus, but now he needs to get back up to his feet. This is do or die. It could be one to one. And Jesse Mealy is just trying to Trying to wait this one out, you know? He's gassed, he took the fight on three days short notice, but he's grinding it out right now. He's hey, so still trying to get up though. You see, he's still strimping, trying to push him out, using his knee to get out. Beautiful use of the, of the knee here. And this is exactly where Jesse Mealy wants to be. He wanted to take him away from the cage so that Jesus isn't able to wall walk. And now he tried to get a knee slice pass in, but a beautiful shrimp by Jesus Diaz. And now Jesus is fighting against the clock here. He can't be content to lay on his back. He has to get back up to his feet, or he has to attack with a triangle or an arm bar. Or Uma Plata, Gogo Plata, because look, with what we saw with the last fight, which it was a split decision, you never know where these judges' heads are at. I agree, and I would say this round was half and half. It could really go either way. Half of the round, Jesus controlled. Half of the round, Jesse controlled. Well, we can, incredible fight. We can both. Ramondo Scott in the black and yellow. Adam Silcio in the black and red. And Adam Silcio has to close that distance. This is five foot eight versus five foot three. And Ramondo's a massive flyweight. Oh, and a big uppercut. He's swinging bombs already. And a big teep right to the body of Silcio. And if he can, um, he, if he can add those up, it's going to slow down his opponent for sure. And a nice uh, three-two by Ramondo Scott. You can already tell that the experience that Ramondo has in the NFC cage is playing a factor. Yeah, he's a lot more composed early on. Socio's kind of burning himself out, going in short bursts. And you know, this fight already lasted longer than uh, Ramondo's NFC and NFC NFC debut. Another big hook cross, though. And that leg kick was checked there. You know, Jamar, you're coming off a couple of fights with much bigger with much bigger opponents. What advice would you give to Adam Silcio here to close the distance? Use your size to your advantage. Although you're small, you can use that to your advantage. You can slip out of a lot of more positions here. Oh, and he catches faster. it with a straight right. You're a lot faster. Two, three, two by Ramondo Scott. Inside leg kick by Adam Silcio. Oh, he went for the high kick, just like in his debut there. He's going for the 27. And that's what he called for anyone that doesn't know. Once again, his... Oh, big 
big right hand from Romando Scott. His debut was a 27 second head kick KO, but, the, but Jeff Kim doesn't count that as a knockdown. I think that was a slip. I don't care what anyone says, that was a big cross. <laughs> and look at the hand speed of Adam Silcio there in the pocket there for a second. Adam Silcio, for his NFC debut, his first fight ever, he is showing. And a big hook cross right out the gate from Romando, and another one. And that right, right hand landed clean. And they are really quick here, Daniel. That right hand landed clean. They just clashed heads there. Oh, a big body, body kick. kick from Silcio. And there's that MMA experience right there. Beautiful one, two by Romando Scott. And he gets caught with a the counter there. And these two are banging it out, Jamar. And again, Mondo keeps on dropping Silcio with these leg kicks, these sweeps, that cross. Well, Mondo's up here. I think he may have just kicked an elbow. Yeah, he definitely made an expression there. Yeah, he's feeling that. I think he kicked an elbow as well, Jamar. Oh, beautiful combination by Adam Silcio and a knee by Romando Scott. Wow. A nice explosive Superman to a leg kick. Almost like GSP. And right away the push kick right drops to the him. ground. Definitely a closer round, but Romando Scott is flooring him with kicks. Oh, and he eats a big body cut, big body kick there. Oh. Oh, Inside leg kick by Adam Silcio. Big push kick right to the face of Silcio by Romando Scott. Oh, and a nice straight. cross. And he pushes him down. <laughs> wow, he popped his head straight back with that straight right. Great are, second round. We are going, we are heading into the last, and we're going to see what happens here in the third and final round. A beautiful one two by Romando Scott to start things off in the third round. He's really finding his range with that jab now, Jamar, and a push kick. Romando. He's really coming into his own now, Jamar. He's starting to feel comfortable. All those experiences he's had in the past. Oh, big hook from Socio. He eats a big right there and a left hook. Look at the explosiveness. And there you see the experience. It's funny. Socio style reminds me of UFC fighter Sam Cecilia. A similar former to UFC fighter. Excuse me. He's now a Bellator fighter. Sam Cecilia coming straight forward, throwing big bombs. And if he hits you right on the right on the button, you're going down, guaranteed. A big leg kick there by Adam Silcio. And he moves out of the way of the return. Oh, big Superman punch. This kid's explosive. This is only the third fight of the night, Daniel, and we are having an action packed. We really are. You know, people try to sleep on these cars because it's amateurs, but you got to understand these amateurs have aspirations of becoming pros. They have to start somewhere. These guys are hungry. They want to prove to the NFC that look, we're future main event fighters. That's why they're going out here and they're performing the way they are tonight, Jamar. I would definitely agree. And you can clearly see. Th and you see how he threw that right hand and then he moved his head off the center line. It almost reminded me of when Andre Ward would do that in his boxing matches before, down again. before the legend retired. And a great three-round fight by Romano Scott. Marcus Leach in the gray and green and McGee in the gray and white. Marcus Leach standing southpaw, McGee orthodox, and an inside leg kick by Marcus Leach to start things off here in our heavyweight contest. Given the weight difference, the size difference is still tremendous. 
Although Marcus is heavier, McGee looks like the... Oh, he eats a big right hand! And he wobbled there. It was right behind the ear. Jamar was a right hook. And he definitely felt that first punch of the fight. Oh, but Leach got caught here. McGee's trying to muscle him. Look at the wide base by Marcus Leach. He's got one underhook. He's got an over-under. He's trying to swim in that second underhook. But McGee, you know what he's trying to do here, besides take him down, obviously, Jamar, is he's trying to recover from that first right hook that hit him behind the ear and had him wobbling for a second. Absolutely. The best way to do that in an MMA fight is to clinch up immediately or go for a takedown. Now, we'll see how long George Allen lets them hang out here because, you know, George Allen's the kind of guy that if you start, and there it is, there's the separation. We'll see if uh, Marcus tries to throw that right hook again. And there it is! Oh, 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 oh my God! Can you believe it? Marcus Leach! Marcus Leach! Marcus Leach! First round knockout right hook! And the place is going crazy! McGee is out cold! God, and a great show of sportsmanship by Marcus Lewis there checking on McGee and McGee. And now McGee's coming too. They're letting him know what happened. He got caught with a right hook. Unbelievable performance by Marcus Leach. He's riding the momentum. Now of three straight victories. Down goes Frazier. Wow. What a knockout by Marcus Leach. happens in the heavyweight division. The officials are letting McGee know exactly what happened. He's fine here. He just got hit with a big shot. story of this fight. He landed the right hook early on. He wobbled McGee, and then McGee tried to pin him up against the fence, tried to recover, and then when they separated, another right hook was all she wrote, and it was lights out in Georgia. And here we go! Round one, underway! Kayla Cornejo in the black and orange, Sierra Camphor in the black and white, and right away an oh, outside good leg kick by Sierra. by Sierra Camphor. Nice sidekick. It'll be interesting because it looks like 
Kayla Corneo, she's trying to establish her range, and with Sierra Camper, you already know she's trying to throw that big, that big right hook, the big overhand oh. left. Oh, and there it is, a beautiful 3-2 by Sierra Camphor. Yeah, these two look like they have no interest in taking it to the ground tonight, as you said before, Daniel. Yeah, it will definitely appear that way, but when some punches start landing, uh, who knows if that narrative will change, Jack. And right away, they're both feeling each other out, trying to gauge the distance, trying to look for an opening. Oh, and a beautiful oh! hook kick by Kayla Corneo, followed up by a blitz by Sierra Camphor. And wow, very surprising. Bro. Sierra oh, Camphor oh. shoots for the first takedown. Oh. Cornejo's getting, has very good. Do, do, oh. Nice knees by, by Cornejo. Oh. Oh, nice trip by Cornejo. And Cornejo right inside control. Now in half guard, this is exactly where Sierra Campbell does not want to be. This is the issue she had in her past two fights. She's looking to get this back up to the feet. But if Kayla Cornejo watched the tape, she knows if you want to beat Sierra Campbell, look, anything can happen on the feet. But if you want a definitive advantage, you have to take this fight to the mat. Let's see if she tries to pass to a full mount here. But right away, you see Sierra Campbell working her way up to the fence. Let's see if she looks to wall walk. Oh, and Sierra Kempfor appears to be trying to get out of side control. There we go. Now she's in half guard. Or not side control. <laughs> Let's see if, uh, if Kayla Cornejo can pass, try to get a full mount, try to establish a dominant position. She is in top half guard, which obviously is going to win her the round, but if she wants to make a definitive statement, let's see if she can pass, get on, get in that full mount, and start landing some big shots. Corneo is doing a very good job at maintaining a dominant position. Oh, and it appears she's going for, I believe, a Kimura. From what we've seen so far in Sierra Camphor's MMA career is that she's very hard to submit, you know, because her last two opponents also took her down the ground. But her submission defense was on point. The area she needed to work on was her get-up game. Oh, and full mount. But not enough time left. However, Sierra did give up that round. Yeah, that took a different turn away, and here we go. More. Oh, nice exchange by both fighters. Yeah. You know. It would appear as though Kayla Cornejo is the more, ooh, ooh. The more composed fighter here in the second round. It looks like Sierra Campor is breathing heavy, and right away. Wow, these two are engaging in the clinch more than I was truly expecting. I, I mean, I was truly expecting these two to just abandon. Oh, nice, att nice attempt. Yeah, but you know, Kayla Cornejo saw that she had an advantage on the ground, and now she's looking to get it back there because she feels like, look, that wasn't as hard as I expected to get her down, and I won the round doing that. Why not try to do that here in the second and third oh, absolutely. round? Absolutely, absolutely. Steal the oh, fight on the judges' nice, scorecards. Nice jab by Corneo. Oh, nice sidekick. Oh, nice! Oh, nice! Nice three-two by uh, by Sierra. And, you know, Sierra hits really hard. She just has to find her distance. You know, the interesting thing here is Sierra would be really good in a boxing match, but this is MMA. She needs to find that MMA range. Absolutely, and it appears. Oh, uh, knees would have been very effective there. And it looks like Sierra slowing down here. On a front choke, oh, yeah. front oh. choke attempt by oh. Kayla Corneo. Oh, Corneo's got that locked. Standing oh, she's guillotine. got it locked. Sierra fighting the hand so far. Let's Sierra's see. Getting, appears to be getting a two-on-one right, right under. Oh no! Wow, that was close. It looked like she was thinking about tapping. Oh, Corneo's, Corneo's got that in tight. She needs to make a slight adjustment. Oh, nice knee by Corneo. Yeah, she doesn't have it locked anymore. She's only got one hand now. Sierra's hanging on, though. You gotta give her credit. She's really hanging on right now. Oh, and she gets out. She's hanging on, but now, oh, and now oh. she has to swing back. Exchange. Oh, these two are slugging it. It looks like Sierra's very tired here. And Kayla Cornell, look how composed she is in her MMA debut. Not breathing hard at all. Feels like the NFC cage is her home. And she's showing that there with another sidekick. 
And now she's making Sierra Camphor try to play her game. Yeah, Sierra appears to be fatiguing in this round. No, absolutely. And she's not playing to her strengths. She's trying to trade side kicks. She's trying to trade clinch exchanges. What she needs to do is let those hands go. Oh, oh, and oh, big oh, combination Corneo's up against Corneo. the cage. Oh, Corneo oh, teeing off here. Oh, 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 oh nice head kick by. Sierra's trying to take her back. Wow. And she end, she almost ended up on the mat herself, and there it is. Oh, man. Going into this round, this is the third. And here we go, third final round, baby. Right. Nice kick by Corneo. Oh, nice, oh, no. nice right hand, hand by Sierra. Nice right hand oh. by Sierra. Corneo. Oh, she form. takes her back. I did not expect this. Oh my. Oh, she's going for. Oh, and she takes it to the ground. Oh my God. I was not expecting this. She's, she's making. She's turning her weakness into a strength. Wow, Sierra. Oh, she's form. got the choke. Looking it's in. It's locked. Choke. Sierra's got that choke. Corneo's fighting the hands here. Oh, oh, and she's got it. it. This could be it, Jack. Let's see. She's adjusting her grip here. Kayla Corneo is fighting the Beautiful hands right hand and back take. And this is what we said earlier, Jack. We said she needs a 10-8, she needs a 10-7. She needs a definitive statement here in the third and final round if she wants to win this fight. Oh, yeah. And I would definitely say she's lived up to that one. Either that or she needs to get a finish. And it appears she's definitely going for that finish. Oh. But look at the scrappiness of Kayla Corneo. She's not giving up. She's not quitting. She came here to fight. She's surviving the worst position of her MMA career so far. And she might even end up on top. This is a big statement made by Sierra. But now Sierra needs to make a decision here because she's about to get bucked off. She might end up on her back and it could cost her the fight. She needs to decide, do I want to take the back mount, flatten her out, land some big punches, or am I going to still try to attack this choke? That's not oh, Kim Ford gets out of the choke! And, and she's in and she's in Sierra's guard right now. And Kayla Cornejo escapes the choke. Now she's on top. Wow. What a statement made by Sierra. But now Sierra's on bottom. She's not gonna win the fight off bottom. And the judges often tend to forget what you did at the beginning of the round. So Sierra needs to get back up to her feet if she wants to win this fight because one would, conventional wisdom would say she's down 2-0. Oh, definitely, and she and you have to remember she start she started that with 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 her feet standing or standing up. Wow! Oh, and, oh, and they stand up. Ends the fight up. Oh, nice leg kick by Cornejo. Nice, another leg kick by Cornejo. And a stray left by Sierra Camphor there. And a leg, beautiful outside leg kick by Kayla Cornejo. And you see that composure. Yes, Oh, nice check by Sierra. Great fight by these two ladies. Oh, absolutely. I would do that. And they go. Jeff Kemp, our third man inside the cage. And here we go. Chris Breach in the black and red. Xavier Crenshaw in the black and white. Chris Breach, so tall for the weight class, it's really crazy. Absolutely, and right away, Xavier Crenshaw closing the distance with big volume, which is what his gym, X3, is known for. But Xavier Crenshaw has a lot of power into that. And he landed right a big hand. right hand right there, as you mentioned it. And that right leg. Look at the way he's closing the distance early on. And he gets a takedown, just to let him know that, hey, I, I, I'm the boss inside that, the Nat fight cage. But Chris Breach is the more experienced guy in terms of Muay Thai, so we'll see if he has the composure, find his distance, establish his jab, because he's so much taller. He needs to keep this fight on the outside and pop the head of Xavier Crenshaw back. But the way Xavier's closing that distance is going to make it very difficult 
for Chris Breach to get off on his game. And Jamar, I always wonder when fighters take this very aggressive approach early on in fights, I always have to ask, how will the cardio hold up in the later rounds, if it gets there? Maybe we're throwing big bombs here. Oh, and he eats a big straight right to the body, followed by a knee, and a nice takedown. Oh, interesting. So I forget, this is not MMA, this is, this is Muay Thai now. No takedowns, no points for takedowns in this. But you know what? It's discouraging to the opponent, and if the ref's not giving you a warning, then why not? But as I say that, he ate a couple big knees to the body, and then he lands one of his own. Beautiful control by Xavier Crenshaw to begin this fight. A dominant first round. And he opens up with a sidekick, does Chris Breesh. A oh, big counter right hand by Xavier Crenshaw, immediately off the kick. Head movement too by Crenshaw. Oh, they're trading hard in the pocket. It would appear as Jeff Kemp just warned Xavier Crenshaw about the takedowns. I can't confirm, but it looks like that's what he said. He said, no more takedowns. Oh, he ate a big teep to the midsection there, did Crenshaw. Chris Breach is establishing his range a little bit better here in the second round. And some nice knees from the clinch. Jamal, would it appear that Crenshaw is slowing down a bit here? I wouldn't say so just yet. He seems to be doing just fine catching. It seems like he's more so trying to play the counter game now. You know, that's a very good point because he is trying. He's not checking the kicks. However, he's doing something that Benil Dariush does, it, and that's a kick counter. Every time Chris Breach throws the leg kick, Xavier Crenshaw counters with a straight right. But this was a much closer round than the first, Jamar. And chances are it could be one-to-one -one heading into the third. Both men need to go for broke here. Third round determines it all. Oh, Chris Breach with a buckling leg kick. And he eats some shots in exchange. Xavier's going straight in. Xavier knows it could be 1-1, and he needs to make a statement if he wants to win the third and final round and secure himself a victory here in his Muay Thai debut. But right now, the experience of Chris Breach is showing here. And as I say that, he eats a big left hand. leg kick by Xavier Crenshaw. And I'm surprised that Chris Breach isn't trying to pop that jab more often. And once again, a leg kick counter by Xavier Crenshaw with the straight right. Chris Breach needs to stop kicking, honestly, because every single time he kicks in this fight, he's been countered with a straight right. He needs to establish that jab. He needs to understand that he is the longer, taller guy here. And if he wants to beat Xavier Crenshaw, he needs to use those long, straight punches, the teep, and use that footwork. Both men are clearly exhausted, though, so that's clearly going out the window right now. 
It is. However, you still see Xavier Crenshaw going forward. You know that counts for a lot on the judges' scorecards. You know, it's like Coach Brown always said. It's not always about who's got the better technique. Sometimes it's about who can push harder and longer, and that's exactly what Xavier Crenshaw is doing tonight. And most 